have a few things I want to talk about, uh, but also ask Larry to opportunity for you. Uh, a couple of things have come up. I know the flyer said we're going to talk about releases of contracts, et cetera, but uh, I thought that was in next week, but we can discuss that also. Um, very, very important. Very important. Must have a written agreement to represent anyone in the state of Virginia, and you need it, come on, folks, before you leave the office. You know, we, we have a situation where, you know, somebody didn't have it, and then they want us to help them out with the buyer, you know, buyer agency, commission, et cetera. Uh, and then they were going to go and see if the people would backdate one. If you go, if you do that kind of stuff, you're just going to ask for a big problem at deep core. Okay. The state of Virginia is very specific. It must be in writing when you are engaged by the other party. And that means when they think you became their agent. So get these things in writing before you, you go out. Um, there is no sub agency in Virginia today. Uh, we will discuss that in length in, a, in uh, when we look at the uh, uh, listing ag agreement next um, Wednesday. We'll be covering that paragraph. If you do not have the same principal broker as the listing agent, then you must have a written buyer broker agreement for working on that listing. If you have the same principal broker, then you could have a customer. That being said, each one of Fairfax Realty offices have a different principal broker, okay? So if you are going to show, if you're with, with uh, the Tyson's office and you are going to show a listing for the Falls Church office, two different principal brokers, you need a written representation agreement. And that's whether it's to, to for a buyer, for a tenant, uh, a landlord, seller, it has to be in writing right up front any questions about that because we had a we had a buyer that was confused he had a, a buyer broker agreement with um, with one of our offices and they thought that meant that all the offices were representing them so they just went ahead and had the open house agent write a contract thinking it's the same company so um, protect yourself okay no questions on that at all. Great. I got a call from, from Dave um, Mikowski. The, he has ownership interest in all the offices. And he asked me to touch on fair housing. I'm going to touch on fair housing briefly today, but then I'm going to do a, a full session on fair housing um, uh, in another session. Uh, this all came down to the Section 8 problem, but real quickly, I'm in the state of Virginia. We have different laws in Virginia than D.C. and Maryland, okay? But we have federal fair housing law, okay? In the federal fair housing, there are two fair housing acts that can control the residential real estate activity. Your Civil Rights Act of 1866 prohibits race discrimination, race discrimination only, no exemptions or exceptions to that law, period. We had the Fair Housing Act of 1968, had five originally original protected categories, race, color, national origin, sex, and religion. Those are the five original protected categories under that act. There are four exemptions to that act, okay? A single family home sold or rented by the owner, okay? For sale by owner, not listed, not a real estate agent, and you don't own four or more rental properties. The second exemption, a fourplex or less if you lived in one of the units because now you only own three units unless you owned additional properties. Okay. The uh, third exemption was for religious organizations. The fourth exemption was for private organizations. Unless they discriminate in membership requirements, they were exempt. Okay, But everybody's covered once they list a property 
with an agent or they get a license. Okay. Now, in, in, they added two new protected categories to the federal law at March 12th of 1988, and that was handicap and familial status. Familial status gets confused a lot of times with marital status, but familial status means I am legally responsible for a child that has not reached the age of 18. I have the right to live wherever I want except for homes for older persons, Housing for Older Persons Act, which is an exemption, um, or unless it violates the zoning law. Okay, so those are the federal categories. Where we're running into a problem is when you get to state categories. Okay, now in the state of Virginia, this, they have all the federal, and we also have elderliness. Now, this one could hurt if you didn't know you were elderly. Elderly list means you're 55 or older, okay? Then you are protected by fair housing. Well, this past year, okay, July 1st, Virginia added protected categories, okay? Sexual orientation and gender identity are now protected under Virginia fair housing not federal, Virginia. Now this was already covered by uh, our code of ethics, article 10, but now it's covered by law in Virginia. They also added veteran status. You cannot discriminate against someone because they are a veteran. But the one that is causing confusion, okay? Causing confusion uh, and it, I'm just going to refer to the exclusive right to lease listing agreement. Uh, it's form K-1281, if you want to ever take a look at it. Paragraph 5, okay? As of date, landlord, one, owns more than four rental dwelling units in the Commonwealth, okay? So, four units... Okay, you're okay. You have that fifth unit, you are covered by this new category, source of income, right? Or two, they own individually or through a business entity more than a 10% interest in more than four rental dwelling units in the state of Virginia, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. They could own a property in DC, one in Maryland, and two here that doesn't cover them, okay? They have to be in Virginia, okay? If the answer is yes, the landlord must consider applications from prospective tenants who qualify for the housing voucher program, section eight, okay? It's not an option, 10% or more interest. So if you have up, set up corporate, I mean, a limited liability company for five different rentals you own, you're going to be covered because you probably have more than a 10% interest in each one of those entities. So when you get to that question on the input sheet for will the, will the owner consider a voucher or not, you have to know whether you're in Virginia, you have to know if they own more than five properties, five or more or 10% interest, okay? And if you're in Maryland, it's you have to know which counties you are. Mont Montgomery County, Prince George's County protected. But DC source of income is not an option. They don't have this five property limit, okay? So the agent that we have that's running into a problem saw the input sheet question for Bright and it said, will they owner accept a voucher or not? It's an optional question. And, and, they, said, and they asked the owner and the owner said, uh, no, I don't want to accept vouchers. Well, the Justice Department got a hold of it. Now it's a mess, okay? So you got to know where you're working. Now, paragraph five for Virginia law goes on to say, if no, if you don't own five or more, 
landlord will or will not consider applications from prospective tenants who qualify for the housing voucher program, Section 8. So if an owner owns four or less and they still want to consider Section 8, then fine. They could answer yes. In Virginia, only if it's four or, you know, if it's less than five, then the owner could say, no, I don't want to do it. And you don't have a fair housing problem. The problem that we run into is agents have licenses in multiple jurisdictions and they may, may never do a rental, but all of a sudden you get one rental in DC and you answer a question improperly, you, you're gonna uh, run into a major, major problem. Now, Virginia also with this um, section eight, more than five properties, uh, the law goes on to say, if they're not approved by uh, within 15 days of application, then the landlord can move on from that application. They can't say, no, I won't consider it. But once they consider it, if the program hasn't approved that party for that property in 15 days, they can move on to a different application. Any questions about that? Because it, it, it can, you don't want to get involved in a fair housing um, investigation at all, even if, even if you think you're right. Now, a key word here is they did not intend to discriminate. They just didn't understand the question. It does not matter. Intent does not matter. In fair housing, if you did it, you did it. Okay. So be careful with that. So we have the, we have the seven federal categories. We now have in Virginia, elderliness, we have sexual orientation, we have gender identity, we have veteran status, okay, and we have this source of income section eight for five or more properties or 10% interest in five or more properties, okay. We also have local fair housing law, okay, and local fair housing law, the one category that is, is uh, covered, readily covered, is um, uh, marital status, okay? Marital status. You can't discriminate against me because I choose not to be married. I would not discriminate against you because you choose to be married. So by qualifying, et cetera, you do it the same no matter how many people are involved, okay? So one of the questions I get all the time, do we have to consider groups? Well, I think you do unless there's more than four parties because most of your county zoning ordinances say no more than four unrelated parties can live in a single residence, okay? Uh, actually, the landlord uh, would be violating zoning ordinance to allow more than five unrelated parties to occupy a property uh, in Fairfax County, for instance, uh, unless it's approved as a group residential facility, okay? But if you would, if uh, you would accept a, a husband and wife and two kids, why would you not accept uh, people that aren't married with two kids or, or groups? Well, they might tear the house up, et cetera. Be careful how you uh, turn down groups, okay? Uh, and also, the, you know the no pet policy. Uh, we have now, um, especially in the state of Virginia, our fair housing law also now includes uh, accommodation for uh, service animals and assistance animals, right? Uh, so if someone comes with that request, um, there's, there's steps you need to take. Uh, in your contracts package, I believe there should be some forms that NVAR has given you. Uh, I will cover that in another session. Uh, it's by itself because it's kind of detailed. But I want you to be a, a, aware of this source of income. If you don't know uh, how to answer a question on an input sheet, please, please check with your managers before you automatically just check something. Uh, and if it's not mandatory, uh, then be careful how you do it. Any questions about this fair housing 
stuff. No one? Okay. Does anybody have a question you want to ask of me today about anything that's real estate related? <laughs> No problems out there? That's good. Now, uh, I'm just gonna touch real quickly here for a couple minutes, um, uh, boarding contracts and releasing. If you have, for instance, a home inspection contingency, in order for that buyer to get out of the contract, they have to do what it says in the addendum. They must send a notice to void the contract. Okay. And NVAR has a notice to void the contract form K1367. You have to do it within the time period. It has to be done by 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and you use the notice to void a contract, and then you include the release of the contract form. You don't just send a release over with the home inspection report and think you're out of it. That's not what it requires. Follow the proper steps. Now, with financing, it's a little different. Okay, with the financing contingency. There is a notice that we now have um, NVAR put out, and that notice is when it comes to the appraisal, okay, there is a notice of an appraisal form. If the appraisal comes in low, you send that form over, which now starts your negotiating period in the appraisal addendum, okay? Now, then your time period for negotiating starts. If you can't reach an agreement by such and such date, well, then it calls for the buyer to void their contract. If they don't void their contract, then they move forward. They have to buy the house with the higher, with the lower appraisal and pay the cash difference. So in the past, you know, it just sort of went away. Now that buyer must must use that uh, voiding of the contract if they're if they're not going to go forward due to an appraisal. Same way with the finance. So uh, I will cover that. You know, send out in advance. I'll cover this subject uh, in detail uh, in the forms that you need, and we'll look at it together. But for today, I just wanted to alert you of the proper way to do those. But in a future session, we'll pull out, we'll look at each form, uh, what the addendum say, et cetera. Any questions? Johanna, you have anything else for them today that you want to discuss? No, just probably remind them that we are going to be sending the flyers every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of what you're going to cover on Mondays, and then Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday at what you're going to cover on Wednesdays. Okay. And so, who the guest speaker is going to be. So we'll have, we're not going to have guest speakers on Wednesdays, only on the Mondays, correct? Whatever you decide, we can yeah. have a guest speaker and then we'll just add it to the flyer. Okay. So... Uh, we will pick up with the exclusive right uh, to sell listing agreement on Wednesday in our in our back to basic section. Uh, we will be talking about paragraph 10 and 11 uh, on uh, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. So if you uh, haven't downloaded that, it's form K1336. Uh, and uh, they're going to teach me how to use Dropbox and so maybe I'll be able to bring some forms up on screen as we're talking about them. No, no promise, but uh, you can 
try to teach an old dog new tricks. No, no other questions? Mm -hmm. I need a contract. Well, great. Then I will, um, I will see you guys on Wednesday at 11 o'clock and we'll pick up with this uh, exclusive right to uh, sell listing agreement. And then maybe next week we'll do these, uh, how to properly avoid these contracts, et cetera. All right. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you guys on uh, on Wednesday. Sure.